just take the weed. I announced on Instagram I've stopped breastfeeding. I have all my crying out of my system. I've made a promise to myself to not cry on the internet anymore. So we'll see how long that lasts. And I know I do cry on screen a lot, but it's like the usual shit. If I talk about like people I've lost in my life or my relationship with my mother, obviously I'm gonna get a bit teary eyed. But over the past week, I was just like crying over literally nothing. Like it wasn't even making any sense the stuff I was crying over. And that was like at the start of my pregnancy was kind of similar. And then I was like, oh shit, maybe I'm pregnant. Wait, I'm not even having sex. Oh, abstinence is actually fucking class because you don't have to worry about that. Or is it? Or am I just saying that to make myself feel better? I've had a proper, proper emotional week, but I'm feeling much more myself. But there was also a huge fear for me. Number one was sex has been on my mind so much more. I feel like any time, obviously because I've spoken about this again, I feel like I'm constantly repeating myself, the Catholic guilt and just like being a mother as well. I get so, I feel so much shame every time. <laughs> I'm like, oh. <laughs> When you get an urge, I'm like, I'm a pervert. I shouldn't be having these dirty thoughts. I was thinking like, how do people have sex in Dublin anymore when you're all living with your parents? Are people doing it in their cars? Like what, what's everyone d been doing? And then another fear I had with the hormone, hormonal changes. I obviously am still holding shame, but I'm trying to give my past self compassion and empathy for like who I was before I had my baby because it's obvious how and it's very apparent apparent how much I've changed and matured since I've had my baby I would like to think so I'm scared now that I've stopped breastfeeding that my hormones are going to go back to normal and I'm going to go back to my erratic like impulsive behavior that I had before I had my daughter and it's probably an irrational fear and I'd say it's more of a it was less of a hormonal change and probably just like habitual the changes over time and just because I'm generally getting older but for some reason I'm like oh my god I'm gonna get accidentally pregnant again now because I'm not breastfeeding like as if I don't have autonomy over myself I'm like my hormones are controlling me but I'm so scared of I think I'm so scared of mental turmoil because it, it does take over you so much um, and I only realize now that I'm actually feeling really mentally healthy how much it affected me in the past but again with the compassion and empathy thing even now, I'm like, I'm not showing my past self empathy. I'm like, you should have taken more control of your life. You shouldn't have let it get like that. You shouldn't have let yourself get that down. But obviously it was like, whatever the fuck was going on in my head. But I think now that I've stopped breastfeeding, I'm scared that that's gonna come back and take over my life. It was like this demon over me. I have been praying to God, obviously. I feel like anytime I watch a YouTuber and then they start talking about religion, I'm like, what? I'm not as a part of any organized religion whatsoever, but I do like to believe that there's a higher power or just the fact that I can talk to someone who's not me or say thank you to someone. And it has, because I find it difficult to write down like gratitude lists because it feels really pointless. Whereas if I'm doing it in my head to a God, being like, thank you so much, God, for this lovely day. Thank you so much, God, for my health and my daughter's happiness and our relationship together and the roof over my head and that sort of shit. It feels like it's actually pointed at something or someone more than me. So that's why I find it much easier to speak in that way. And it probably is the Catholicism coming back. It was probably because my head was like, you've made your confirmation. You need to keep up that relationship with God, Keelan. Jesus hasn't heard from me in a while. My child's not even christened but i have been having luckily nothing has nothing terrible has happened i've been having the best time every single day i spend with my daughter i wake up feeling so elated and happy and lucky that i get to spend every single day with my daughter and what we do together like going outside going to the library together and i've also found because my past self like in my early 20s you know when you're feeling lost and shit and you feel like you need to change things up or to be doing new things all the time to keep things interesting and I think I was also addicted to chaos a little bit from like friendships and relationships I liked I or maybe it was just because what it was what I was used to I thought it was abnormal if things were going smoothly so then I would create a problem I've obviously worked through that issue and now I'm like actually loving having a routine and doing the same things every day it's making me feel so much more calm and safe because that was obviously the derivative of a lot of anxiety for me or anxious feelings having pan panic attacks was like the thought that anything could fall apart at any time whereas now i'm like i have a routine i'm looking after myself i know i have plans for my future i have savings feeling real mature tomorrow's mother's day it's my second mother's day as a mother i love it i love my daughter so much i love being a mom so much being a parent is my favorite thing i just feel so oh now actually one fuck up from my week i was supposed to give a talk um, at the Women in Business conference, the Big Sis conference in Cork and I missed my train just because I can't organise myself. I don't have formal childcare at the moment. My daughter is on waiting lists 
um, because I'm taking a lot, a lot more projects which I can't talk about right now but I have like three projects that I have to work on that I really don't want to fuck up and I really want to do them because they're like passion projects but I obviously need proper childcare. My job at the moment, which is just editing my podcast and YouTube video, I can 100% get done during her nap times at the, at the weekend. That's totally manageable. I'm not saying that that's hard whatsoever. But the things that I want to take on to actually solidify a future for me and my daughter, because it's like outside of being, outside of the internet sort of stuff. Does that make sense? It's like actually a proper adult job. But you know, it has like longevity to it. I need childcare. Like, a child minder two days a week and nothing major. So I had her down on waiting list for creches and then I had all these apps looking for a child minor and I just can't find anyone nearby. I've been trying to figure that out and trying to find a balance where, because I actually love looking after her 100%. Like I want to be a stay at home parent but still make an income. And at the moment I'm really managing being able to do that, which is fantastic. I really feel like I have the best of both worlds and I love it but I do need just a little bit extra time. Even one day, to be honest, would really, really help me because I feel like, because I have the limit on the time that I have working through with her naps and the weekend, I'm actually a lot more productive because I know I have a limited, a limited amount of time and I'm setting myself deadlines every week. I did also fuck up this week because my podcast is late. So I've missed one week of a podcast and I obviously don't post weekly on YouTube. So I'm like, there's something, I mean, something's got to give because I still can't be as consistent, consistent as I want to be. And I want to obviously make it, make a living. I've also been in a bit of a reading slump. I'm not watching, I'm not even watching Celebrity Big Brother. Like I'm not watching any shows. I feel like I'm really, I've been falling asleep with my daughter to, at her bedtime <laughs> and by accident because I've stopped breastfeeding. So usually I would nurse her to sleep and I, f I found it really difficult to be able to get her to sleep without nursing her because obviously I'm not used, like it's a totally new thing for me and she's obviously not used to it. She's like, why the fuck are you trying to soothe me to sleep? Give me the tit woman. So since I've stopped producing breast milk, I basically just lie down in the bed with her <laughs> and rub her back. But I feel like I should be doing, cause I'm like, I feel like I should be doing more. But if I try to walk around with her and sing to her, dance with her, she hates it. She's literally pushing and kicking me off her. So I just get into bed with her and I rub her back and I sing to her like really lightly. And then she will fall asleep eventually. And I'll be like, I'm mama's gone sleepies. And then obviously because the lights are off, I'm actually snoozing away. And then I wake up at two in the morning being like, I didn't brush my teeth. And then I'll go in and brush my teeth. But I haven't had really good sleeps. And then waking up, I wake up about 45 minutes before her naturally. I don't know how that's happening because she wakes up at like seven. So I've been waking up at quarter past six and I'm just like, what do I do? Mother's Day tomorrow, I'm going out for brunch with my immediate family, which is my daughter and her dad. Of course, we spend special occasions together. And then for lunch, I'm going out with my mom and her friend, having a lovely Mother's Day with all my favorite girls. Rachel? No, baby, not Rachel, I'm doing yoga. No, baby. I really feel like a failure, but also I'm not saying this to look for sympathy or for people to give me compliments or tell me that I'm not, because I don't really see it in a bad way anymore. And I want to reframe my brain in how I perceive failure. Oh, a lot of aspects of parenting and child psychology is to do with a healthy approach to failure and how we view mistakes. Because a lot of the time when we're striving for success, we view failure and mistakes as something to avoid at all costs, but actually, if we had a healthy approach to failure, we'd end up learning so much more about ourselves and, and how to actually achieve our goals. 
So for example, I've dropped out of college three times, uh, followed by a string of short courses for whatever sparked an interest in me at the, at the time. And I've fallen in love so much, gotten my heart broken and then did it all over again <laughs> multiple times. I've changed myself to be liked and got rejected anyway, which is way, way worse. I've had a failed business, failed friendships, failed goals, but also what a privilege it was to be able to learn and to be able to take risks and grow when a lot of people don't even have those opportunities. And what a privilege it was to fall in love with the per in the first place and have people love me. I really don't want that to dampen my, my life experience and for me to avoid love or to avoid um, being open with people just because I've experienced heartbreak. I, I don't think my life, particularly like living at home and being a single parent, I don't think my life would be deemed successful or aspirational by like general standard. But on the inside, I'm enraptured by the morning sun and elated by my daughter's laugh and at peace with my reflection. Every mistake I've made has led me to where I am now. And I wake up happy every day. My sisters are Irish twins, meaning they came in quick succession of each other but weren't in the womb at the same time. When I was a child, I used to think they were telepathic. They seemed to be able to communicate with each other with just a look and predict how the other was feeling without ever letting anyone else in on their secret. They had and still have a bond that I could never really emulate with them or anyone else. On mornings before school, when the dawn chorus sung over everything, We'd have to wrangle little Saoirse out of the cupboard she was hiding in while Ellie begged me to braid her hair. Our bags that smelled of old juice and pencil shavings were slung on our backs to race and fight over the front seat of the car. I spent my childhood wishing to grow up, be independent, eat sweets before dinner, stay up late and not wear a coat. But those were the days I was living with my sisters and I would give anything to have them back. Happy International Women's Day, girls. It has been a privilege growing up with you.